A major incident involving a bomb detonation in the financial district of Canary Wharf has been confirmed. This is not a drill. Please listen carefully to the following information. At this time, we can confirm that a bomb has exploded in the centre of the Canary Wharf financial district. The attack is of malicious intent and is being treated as a serious and developing situation. As a result, we advise all individuals in the Isle of Dogs region to shelter in place and remain indoors. Emergency personnel are currently blocking all motorways near the detonation site to allow for military use. This includes the A12, A13 and M11. We advise all motorists to avoid this area and find alternative routes. For those who are unable to leave the Isle of Dogs region, we advise you to remain calm and stay indoors. Keep all windows and doors secure and avoid any suspicious activity. Again, in a shocking and alarming turn of events, we have just received confirmation of a major incident in the heart of Canary Wharf's financial district. This is not a drill, and we advise you to listen carefully to the following information. At this time, we can confirm that a bomb has exploded in the centre of the Canary Wharf financial district. The attack is of malicious intent and is being treated as a serious and developing situation. Authorities are currently on the scene and are urging all individuals in the Isle of Dogs region to shelter in place and remain indoors. This includes residents, workers and visitors in the vicinity of Canary Wharf. As a result of the incident, emergency personnel are currently blocking all motorways near the detonation site to allow for military use. This includes the A12, A13 and M11. We advise all motorists to avoid this area and find alternative routes. For those who are unable to leave the Isle of Dogs region, we advise you to remain calm and stay indoors. Keep all windows and doors secure and avoid any suspicious activity. bring you updates on a devastating terrorist attack that has impacted the Canary Wharf financial district in London. Reports indicate that a bomb has detonated in the area, causing widespread panic and destruction. At this hour, the death toll is expected to be in double figures, with authorities warning that the number of fatalities could rise as rescue efforts continue. According to police sources, approximately 67 injuries have been reported with 21 of those individuals being admitted into nearby hospitals in critical conditions. The Greater London area is now being put on high alert for a potential follow-up attack. Security forces have stepped up their presence across the city and police helicopters have been deployed to popular tourist destinations and financial districts to protect the areas from any further suspicious activity. In response to the attack, the UK's Cobra Emergency Committee will be convening an urgent session to discuss the ongoing situation and formulate a response. Home Secretary James Cleverley is reportedly en route to London, where he will meet with senior officials and update the public on the situation. Transport links in and around the Canary Wharf area have been shut down as a precautionary measure. Passengers are being advised to avoid the area and use alternative modes of transportation wherever possible. Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others in addition to my duties in this house.
This is an emergency broadcast. We have received reports of a bombing at the Houses of Parliament in London, including the House of Commons. Communication lines with the building have been lost, and we have no confirmed information on the number of casualties at this time. We can confirm that there has been a bomb detonation in the area, the surrounding area has been damaged and it is being treated as a terrorist attack. We advise all residents in the area to remain indoors and avoid the affected zone. Public transportation has been halted and roads have been closed off to allow emergency services to reach the site. If you are in the vicinity, please evacuate immediately and follow the instructions of local authorities. This is a developing situation and we will provide updates as soon as they become available. Please stay tuned to your local news sources for more information. Four hours ago, a terrorist attack rocked the heart of London, targeting the iconic Houses of Parliament. The House of Commons building has been reduced to rubble and rescue efforts are currently underway to save any survivors. The United Nations has called for an emergency meeting tomorrow afternoon to discuss the international implications of this devastating attack. In the aftermath of the attack, the UK will be put under martial law, effective immediately. The decision has been made in the interests of public safety as it becomes clear that the perpetrators of this atrocity are still at large. Authorities are warning the public to stay indoors and avoid central London, where roads have been blocked off and evacuations are underway in Westminster. The cause of the explosion is still unclear, but there are fears that it may be linked to the Canary Wharf attack which occurred last week. As the flames continue to rage, fire crews are working tirelessly to contain the blaze, but it remains unclear how long it will take to fully extinguish the inferno. At this time, the whereabouts of Prime Minister Rishi Sunak are unknown. The incident has also caused chaos at the nearby Parliament Square, where fireworks and pink smoke have been seen at the detonation site. I wanted to come here tonight to stand with you, to stand with you in this hour of grief as we mourn the victims of an utterly abhorrent act of terror. And perhaps above all, I wanted to come here tonight to stand with you in solidarity. As the Prime Minister of this country, I am unequivocal. The people who support Hamas are fully responsible for this appalling attack. They are not militants. They are not freedom fighters. They are terrorists. Their barbaric acts are acts of evil. There is no other word to describe what we have seen. There are not two sides to these events. There is no question of balance. The United Kingdom stands against this terrorism today, tomorrow, and always. This is a special emergency broadcast. The situation in Scotland is dire and we urge all citizens to remain calm and follow our instructions carefully. On the recent attacks on the Houses of Parliament in London, perpetrated by the militant organisation Hamas, have led to widespread condemnation from around the world. However, we are here tonight to address some grave concerns that have been raised by the First Minister of Scotland, Humza Yousaf. Well, in response to the recent attacks, Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of England, accused Hamas of being responsible for the violence. However, Humza Yousa has categorically denied these claims, stating that there is no evidence to suggest that Hamas was involved in the attacks. This is not the first time that Humza Yousaf has expressed his displeasure with Rishi Sunak's comments. Earlier this week, he also criticised Sunak's decision to impose martial law in Scotland, describing it as a violation of human rights. Yousaf's concerns have been echoed by many Scottish citizens who have taken to the streets in mass protests. The recent mass protests in Scotland have been triggered by the deteriorating situation and they have been calling for another independence referendum. The situation has reached a critical juncture with Yousef rejecting Sunak's martial law action and accusing him of ignoring the grievances of the Scottish people.
Well, in light of the protests, the Scottish government has issued a stern warning to its citizens, urging them to remain vigilant and cooperate with the local authorities. The situation in Scotland is still volatile and the authorities have reminded the people of the 6am to 6pm curfew that is in effect for major cities. Failure to adhere to the curfew may result in severe consequences. In terms of statistics, we have received reports that over 500 people have been arrested in connection with the recent protests in Scotland. The majority of the arrests have been for breaches of the curfew as well as for acts of violence and disorder. However, we urge all citizens to avoid any form of violence or disorder as this will only escalate the situation further. In conclusion, the situation in Scotland is still highly volatile and we urge all citizens to remain vigilant and cooperate with the local authorities. We urge you to adhere strictly to the curfew in effect for major cities and to avoid any form of violence or disorder. For these reasons, which are set out more fully in the judgment, the court unanimously concludes that the proposed bill does relate to reserved matters. Accordingly, in the absence of any modification of the definition of reserved matters by an order in council under section 30 of the Scotland Act or otherwise, the Scottish Parliament does not have the power to legislate for a referendum on Scottish independence. The court will now adjourn. Civil unrest continues to escalate in the streets of Scotland as demonstrations against martial law and pro-Scottish independence take a violent turn. The clashes between protesters and police have become increasingly aggressive, resulting in injuries on both sides. The UK government's decision to implement martial law has sparked outrage amongst protesters, with many seeing it as a violation of their human rights. They have taken to the streets in peaceful demonstrations, demanding the repeal of the martial law decree. However, as tensions rise, some demonstrators have turned to violence, attacking police officers and destroying public property. The situation has now become so volatile that the National Guard has been ordered to control the cities of Glasgow and Edinburgh. In response to the ongoing unrest, local governments have issued a shelter-in-place warning for all metropolitan areas in Scotland. Residents are being advised to stay indoors and avoid any areas where protests are taking place. Martial law remains in place despite the escalating rioting. The Scottish First Minister Hamza Yousaf is set to make a statement in the coming hours as the situation continues to escalate. The border between England and Scotland is being highly monitored for any further conflict as fears of spillover violence increase. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has declared a national emergency in response to the unrest, vowing to restore law and order to the streets of Scotland. During the debate, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and SNP leader Ian Blackford had a fiery encounter regarding the situation in Scotland. Mr Speaker, this morning the Supreme Court clarified a point of law, but the very point of democracy in this union is now at stake, and democracy will not be denied. Because last year the people of Scotland voted for a Scottish Parliament with a majority in the mandate to deliver an independence referendum. The Prime Minister has every right to oppose independence. He has no right to deny democracy to the people of Scotland. If the Prime Minister keeps blocking that referendum, will he at least be honest and confirm that the very idea that the United Kingdom is a voluntary union of nations is now dead and buried? Well, Mr. Speaker, let me start by saying we respect the clear and definitive ruling of the, on the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. And what I would say to the honourable gentleman that, uh, firstly, I am looking forward to also seeing uh, the moderator of Scotland tomorrow. Uh, and I think that the people of Scotland want us to be working on fixing the major challenges that we collectively face. Now is the time for politicians to work together, and that's what this government will do. 
Yesterday, Scottish First Minister Hamza Yousaf assured the public that he will advocate for Scottish independence. We are no longer Team Hamza or Team Ash or Team Kate. We are one team and we will be the team. We will be the generation that delivers independence for Scotland. Where there are divisions to heal, we must do so quickly because we have a job to do. As a party, we are at our strongest when we are united. And what unites us is our shared goal of delivering independence <coughs> for our nation. To those in Scotland who don't yet quite share that passion that I do for independence, I will aim to earn your trust by continuing to ensure we govern well and earn your respect as First Minister by focusing on the priorities that matter to all of us. And in doing so, using our devolved powers to the absolute maximum effect. You are already through to the next round. Well, I had two words in my head and one of them, Dave. We have interrupted your normal programmes for a BBC News report. Good evening and welcome to our live breaking news coverage. We have just received word of a tragic incident that has occurred at the border between England and Scotland. Reports indicate that a border patrol officer has been shot and killed while on duty. This follows the recent strict military presence that was issued in the area due to the implementation of martial law. We will be bringing you live updates as more information becomes available. The assailant, believed to be a Scottish National Party extremist, has fled the scene and is still at large. The English authorities have not yet identified the victim. The recent escalation in tensions between the two nations has made it incredibly dangerous for Border Patrol officers who are working tirelessly to keep the borders secure. The BBC have been in contact with a security expert who has warned of the growing threat posed by Scottish National Party extremists. He has called for a strengthening of the military presence in the area to prevent further escalating tension. We are now bringing you a live address from Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. He is expected to make an emergency announcement regarding the situation in Scotland. Now on ITV1, the quarter-finals continue. It's France v South Africa in the Rugby World Cup. This is ITV. We are interrupting normal programming to bring you some breaking news. In the last few moments, the following statement has been released. This is an emergency alert. Due to an exchange of gunfire on the border, the government advises all individuals near the Scottish border to England to immediately seek shelter and remain indoors until further notice. This situation is ongoing and the situation remains volatile. ITV have received reports of at least 50 casualties, with injuries ranging from serious to critical involving military personnel. Emergency services are responding to the scene, but it is recommended that residents near the border stay put and await further instructions. In light of this escalating situation, martial law will remain in place for the entirety of the United Kingdom. Additionally, there will be an increased military presence in areas that house military bases, including Royal Air Force stations and army barracks. This measure is being taken to ensure the safety and security of all individuals. As a result of the increased security measures, all borders within the UK will be sealed off indefinitely. It is understood that this will cause major inconvenience, but is assured that these actions are being done for the safety and well-being of the populace. The UK government has urged the public not to panic and to cooperate fully with all authorities in the affected areas. This is a developing situation and ITV will continue to provide updates as more information becomes available. and the steps that we are all taking to ensure that everyone has access to the food that they need. We recognise that this is a challenging time. However, there is one message I want to start with loud and clear this afternoon, which is be responsible when you shop and think of others. 
Buying more than you need means that others may be left without. So as you shop, think of those who are finishing their late shifts and need to pop to the local shop at the end of a long day. Today, the Prime Minister and I have spoken to the retail sector. There is more than enough food to go round, and our food supply chain is able to expand production to cope with increased demand. In the last week, sales of some foods have increased significantly, and manufacturers have produced around 50% more food than they usually would. There is no shortage of food available, and more is arriving at shops every day. But the challenge that all of our retailers have faced is keeping shelves stocked throughout the day. This is an emergency alert. We interrupt regular programming to inform you that a national emergency has been declared. In the last 24 hours, over 500 soldiers have been killed and one UK Navy vessel sank in the North Sea near Newcastle, resulting in major loss of life. The incident has led to widespread panic and chaos, prompting irrational behaviour throughout England. The Royal Regiment of Scotland military forces have stationed near the border and refused to relocate back to their registered battalions in an attempt to retaliate against English forces. Reports of full-scale combat on the border between English and Scottish forces have been confirmed. Additionally, pro-Scottish independence protesters have clashed with police as martial law orders have been breached. This escalation has further complicated the situation and raised concerns about public safety. The UK government has responded by deploying the National Guard to London and Manchester, only in reduced numbers as a large number of troops are stationed near Scotland. In response to the ongoing crisis, the Home Office has urged the public to halt panic buying, citing major recession warnings and food shortages impacting major retailers across the UK. The UK government urge all citizens to remain calm and avoid any unnecessary outdoor activities. Please monitor local news channels for further updates. Number 14, 47. Number 10, 28. 33, number one, and your bonus ball, 19. Now for Lotto Plus, one. This is RTE1. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you a breaking news story. Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar is set to make a statement in the coming minutes regarding the ongoing conflict between England and Scotland. Sources close to the Prime Minister's office have revealed that Varadkar will offer his full support for the Scottish forces, following a recent meeting with the Scottish First Minister, Homza Yousaf. The conflict between England and Scotland which began last week over disputes surrounding human rights control alongside political and religious agreements, has escalated rapidly in recent days, with both sides engaging in a series of violent clashes. While the exact nature of Varadkar's support for the Scottish forces remains unclear, some As of this moment, Leo Varadkar has officially tendered his resignation as the Prime Minister of Ireland. His successor Simon Harris has been swiftly appointed to lead the country through this time of political transition. In his first address to the nation, Harris vowed to stand by Scotland's side in their pursuit for independence from the United Kingdom. This pledge comes as a surprise to many, as Ireland has traditionally maintained a neutral stance on the matter. Harris stated Ireland and Scotland share a long and proud history and it is our duty to support them in their pursuit for self-determination. In a move that may raise eyebrows, Ireland has also announced plans to deploy troops to the England-Scotland border. This decision was made in light of the growing tensions between the two nations, and Harris has urged both sides to refrain from escalating the situation further. In light of the ongoing panic buying and shortages in neighbouring countries, the Irish government has urged its citizens to remain calm and avoid hoarding essential items. Harris warned, we do not want to see a repeat of the chaos that has engulfed other nations and we are confident that our people will respond responsibly as we navigate through this uncertain time, 
please remain vigilant and stay tuned for further updates. Our high-ranking officials from the European Union will convene in the European Quarter in Brussels for a critical conference. The two-day meeting, set to begin in the coming minutes, is expected to be dominated by discussions regarding the ongoing civil war in the United Kingdom and involvement from other forces in the conflict. Sources close to the conference's organisers have confirmed that EU leaders will scrutinise recent reports indicating that NATO, a military alliance consisting of 30 member states, will intervene in the ongoing situation in the UK. According to confidential intelligence reports obtained by the Gallium Network, a group of elite soldiers from NATO's Special Operations Command has been covertly operating in several key cities in the UK since the beginning of the year. The report, authored by Gallium's founder and CEO Rohan Hoden, claims that the soldiers have been actively providing tactical support to pro-independence militias in their campaign against the government and civilians perceived as enemies of the state. The leaked documents further assert that Military Alliance has also deployed unmanned aerial vehicles to conduct surveillance on major UK cities. These claims, which are yet to be officially verified by NATO, have sparked international condemnation and raised concerns over the military alliance's perceived disregard for human rights and the rule of law. As the EU grapples with this latest development, some analysts suggest that the bloc's response to the allegations could significantly impact the ongoing negotiations between England and Scotland. The European Commission has not yet issued a formal statement regarding the reports, but several high-ranking officials, including the European Parliament President, Roberta Metzola, have expressed grave concern over the allegations and have called for a thorough, thorough investigation. It's the conference in Brussels, which will bring together key decision-makers from the EU, NATO and other international organisations, uh, is expected to provide insights into the ongoing situation in the UK and shed light on the implications of these disturbing developments for Europe and the world at large. Today I stand before you with a heavy heart, a heart heavy with the burden of a long-standing conflict, a conflict that has left scars on our nation and on our people. As the First Minister of Scotland, I am proud to lead a country that is defined by its courage, its resilience and its unwavering commitment to freedom, equality and self-determination. But we cannot ignore the fact that we are facing a new era, one that is defined by a fundamental shift in the global political landscape, a shift that demands that we redefine our relationships, our values and our priorities, and it is in this context that we find ourselves today grappling with the complex and interconnected issues that define our relationship with England. Issues that have been further complicated by the recent actions of the Central Criminal Court of England and Wales. Let me be clear the recent verdict which found that Hamas was responsible for the bombing attacks on the Houses of Parliament and Canary Wharf is a grave miscarriage of justice. It is a reckless and unfounded accusation that serves to fan the flames of hate and prejudice against the Palestinian people. This court, which operates under the English legal system, has repeatedly shown its prejudice against the Palestinian people. Their disregard for the truth, their blatant disregard for principles of justice and equality, and their blatant support for the Israeli government has become a blight on the integrity of the British legal system. It is high time that the people of Scotland, and indeed the people of the world, speak out against this injustice it is time that we hold these institutions accountable for their actions and demand that they respect the fundamental human rights of all peoples, including the Palestinian people. But I want to focus on the issue at hand, the Scottish independence movement and the conflict between Scotland and England. We as a nation have a long and proud history of struggle and resistance, a history that has been defined by our fight for freedom, equality and self-determination. Today, that fight continues. Today, we stand on the precipice of a new era, one that is defined by a fundamental shift in the global political landscape, a shift that demands that we redefine our relationships, our values and our priorities. The Scottish independence movement is a part of this broader struggle, a struggle, a struggle that seeks to break free from the chains of oppression and to build a new, more just and more equal society. A society that is guided by the principles of compassion, fairness and equality but we are also aware of the challenges that lie ahead. We are aware of the complex and interconnected issues that must be addressed, and we are aware of the conflicts and tensions that continue to define our relationship with England. We know that Brexit has deepened the divisions between our nations and that it has highlighted the fundamental inequalities that exist within our society. 
We know that the economic, social and political implications of Brexit will be felt by people on both sides of the border and that it will exacerbate the existing tensions between Scotland and England. This is an emergency alert. We interrupt the Prime Minister's address to inform you that Britain has commenced their attack on the city of Edinburgh. Reports indicate that the British Army has begun shelling the city. Welsh authorities urge all residents to take immediate shelter and remain indoors. Do not attempt to leave your homes or seek refuge outside as UFOs have been detected in Scottish airspace. These unmanned aerial vehicles pose a serious threat to civilians and should be avoided at all costs. A shelter-in-place order has been issued for all residents. This means that you should remain indoors, close all windows and doors and turn off all lights and electronics to avoid detection. The Prime Minister has been evacuated from the Scottish Parliament and is being transferred to a secure location. Authorities advise all public institutions and businesses to close immediately and evacuate their premises. Authorities urge you to stay vigilant and be prepared to defend yourselves and your loved ones if necessary. STV and other news outlets will provide further updates as the situation develops. Stay tuned to your local news sources for more information. This is not a drill.